Hello everyone, this presentation has been created for our butterfly recorders in, D in Buxton, Derbyshire and covers the butterflies local to our area. But as most of these can be seen anywhere around the UK, it may be of some use to you if you are just starting out on your butterfly journey. I'm going to start with a little bit about how to fill in the recording form and I'll put some links in at the end. Uh, and then we'll move on to uh, identifying the butterflies. So we'll start with filling in the recording form. Right, before you start, uh, like I always take a notebook with me, but some people will actually take a, a recording sheet. But I find the recording uh, book easier. So we start off with the date and the time we started the year. Uh, the survey. As we go in round the uh, survey route, which is divided into sections, we'll record the sunshine in each section. I usually do this by checking on my shadow. If there's a shadow there, we've got sunshine. If I don't see the shadow, we haven't got sunshine. At the end, we'll add the wind direction and the uh, approximate temperature. And when that's it, and then when we finish, uh, we put in the finishing time. So here's a typical recording form. Um, I'm hoping you can see my cursor. In the top right hand corner, we put the week number. Uh, we put in the site name, the date, who's actually doing the recording, because there might be a few of you doing the uh, survey route. Uh, and then we've got the wind direction and end speed on the, on the right hand side and on the left hand side the start and finish time and the end temperature. Uh, I've cut this recording form in half so you'll see small skipper and that's it skipper at the top and then at the bottom unidentified ground and others uh, but in the middle is 20 odd butterflies there to record. So in Derbyshire we've got 32 species and in Buxton we've got 27 of those. Four of them on the uh, Biodiversity Action Plan. Very lucky to have these in Buxton. All butterflies belong to the Lepidoptera family, Lepidol, Lepidos meaning wing, uh, tail or scale, and terror, uh, which is common to a lot of um, insect family names meaning wing, as in diptera, two wings. I'm going to flick through this. If you, if you want to read it, you can always um, pause the video. Uh, we'll quickly go through this. Uh, butterflies have mainly two resting positions. Um, wings flat out or wings up like the small heath. I don't think, it, well I've never seen the small heath with its wings flat. It always settles with its wings folded as, done, as does the green hair streak. There's a couple of uh, photographs of uh, the, but, the, the moths uh, resting positions. Uh, this one, Nethmia quadriolella, is uh, a typical tentiform uh, position. This is a burnished brass. So we've got six families of butterflies in the UK. Four of these we have in Derbyshire. We're missing the swallowtails. And we're missing the metal marks. That's the uh, Duke of Burgundy. It's not one I think we're ever going to see in Buxton. So the skippers first. They're the most primitive of the uh, butterfly families. Very moth like. And we've got uh, three species so far in Buxton with uh, a possible fourth on the way. It's making its way slowly over to Buxton so it will be seen here one day. 
So this is a small skipper. Um, looking at the antennae, you'll see the, the tips are pale brown. And we'll, we'll talk a bit more about this further on. But as you can see, there's quite a large gap between the uh, antennae. This really is just a picture showing that fact. Here we have uh, a female small skipper. Uh, like a golden brown wing with a brown border. Nothing, uh, nothing much um, else to distinguish it apart from the, the wing positions. I think this is unique among the skippers. The, uh, the upper pair are angled from the bottom pair. This is a female. And this is a male. You can see it's a male because of the uh, black scent mark along the uh, middle of the wing. And this is the underside of the small skipper. As I say, it's fairly plain brown. And this is a crab spider trying to make a meal. So, I said earlier about the um, We've got three skippers, and this is potentially the fourth that will eventually make it into Buxton. Uh, there's some subtle differences between the two. As you can see, the Essex skipper has black tips to the um, antennae. The other feature, which you can uh, see on the male, is uh, the, the scent brand in in the Essex skipper it's straight and um, parallel to the, the wing edge. Moving on to the large skipper. Um, this can be identified. It, it isn't that much larger. They're all pretty small butterflies these. But it can be recognised by the pale windows within the uh, in the wing, which can be seen along the uh, the edge here, and it also shows on the underside. Just make it out on this photograph. But the other thing about large skippers, the uh, the ends of the the tips of the antennae curl slightly. Here's a dingy skipper. It does look a bit dingy as time goes on, but I think these are quite bright little uh, butterflies when they when they first emerge. Um, we've got four or five sites around Buxton where we can see these. There's not much to distinguish the male from the female. I think this one's a female. This one's a male. There's a slight bulge on the uh, front of the wings. Moving on to the whites of Pieridae. All medium sized butterflies. Uh, we get big influxes of these from the continent in summer. This is a, a migrant, um, not often seen. We had this one in Buxton about five, six years ago. Uh, the clouded yellow. It's always one to look out for. It looks a bit like a brimstone, but we'll have to see the differences in a minute. There's a male brimstone. Got up tricks from nigh. Um, Gonometrix means uh, angle wing. And you see it's got uh, quite a sharp angle on the edge here, which uh, you don't see in the clouded yellow. This could fly throughout the year. It's one of the first butterflies to fly in spring. It overwinters, as do four other British butterflies. This is a male, bright yellow underwing, 
on the following actually. Um, this is moving on to large white. This there's a lot more black on the tips of the wing. And the black extends halfway down the wing, which what separates it from the um, the small white. This one's a female. Once he's got, oh, this is a female in summer because he's got two black dots on the uh, top of the wing. And this is a male. As you can see, it's got that black extending all the way around the wing, but no black spots and here we have the small white this again is a male it does have black bots but only only uh, only one on each wing and the black doesn't expend, uh, extend as as far on the end of the wing as the uh, large i mean some people can tell these apart in flight but uh, it's not easy. In some cases, it's just going to have to be an unidentified white. And there's a line for that at the bottom of the recording form. This is a female. And that's showing the underwing as well. That's just like a pale yellow underwing. And the, uh, I'll say the black tips that don't expand extend as far down the wing as the uh, large white. This is just uh, some in flight. This is a female warding off a male. Moving on to green vein white. You can see why it's called green vein looking at the underside. Uh, you don't get that in the other whites. Um, I so say they're just pale yellow lemon, whereas this has a distinctive green veins. And the tops of the wings as well, I think the black, these little triangles on the top of the wing, when the, the black seems to bleed up the, up the veins. And there's a male. Just um, little black blobs rather than a continuous black margin around the wing. And this is just a pair of uh, green vein. Yeah, the orange tips are quite distinctive. There's a lot more black around the margin of the wing. And this more suffused black around the thorax as well. This is a female. The males are even more distinctive. As can be seen here, these orange tips. This this is on its food plant, the, uh, the cuckoo flower. Um, these are summer, oh, sorry, well, early summer. Um, Butterflies, you don't see them later on in the year. And that's the underwing of the orange tip. A very distinctive pattern. Now we ne next up are the coppers, Lycini D. As we see here, the small blue has been a Buxton resident, uh, but hasn't been seen for 15 years now. No, 25 years. A very distinctive butterfly. You're not going to misidentify this or mix it up with anything else. Um, green underwings as i said earlier this is this is one of the butterflies that never lays its wings out flat like the uh, small heath um, the, the tops of the wings are actually brown so when it's in flight you're just looking at a, a brown blur 
and it's only when it settles you can see that it's true beauty. Caliphris refers to the uh, the eyebrows, a beautiful eyebrow. It, it means and that refers to the white banding around the eye. Get lots of these at Lightwood in spring. Uh, counted over a hundred on a short walk. They're one of the first butterflies to come out as they overwinter as a pupa. White letter hair streak is not common in Buxton. There's four or five places where it's been seen but only ever singles and it's uh, not an easy thing to spot. It's, it's basically a butterfly that lives in the canopy and will occasionally come down to feed on uh, thistles such as these. Quite distinctive. If you see a brown butterfly with a like this one, it's going to be the white letter hair streak. We don't have any others like this one in Buxton. And here's another photograph. The small coppers fly throughout the year. Um, sometimes we have good years and sometimes uh, they can be a bit scarce, but they're always around. Quite distinctive. I don't think you're going to mix this up with any other butterfly. Maybe when its wings are shut, it can be a bit harder to identify. But this pale brown underside with the little brown, darker brown spots make it quite distinctive. This is a small blue I mentioned earlier, which we, we don't get in Buxton now, but I'll, I'll put it in just in case. You know, no global warming, it may return. Uh, the larva feed on kidney vetch. We've got good stands of that dotted around Buxton. This is the uh, underside. It could possibly be confused with a holly blue, but it, it is a lot smaller. I mean, it's called a blue, but there's not an awful lot of blue in it, if any. There's a pair mating. Moving on to brown argus. Only one site so far in boxing for these. This is a uh, a female, I think. This, the female common blue can look very similar to the brown argus, but there'll always be a bit of blue along the uh, wing edge just closest to the thorax. If you can get a view of the underside, then uh, these two dots on the hind wing are very distinctive. Um, it's like a uh, sorry, there you see it. It's like a figure of eight, so you can't really miss um, that if you can get a view of the underside. This is a common blue. Nice bright male. And polyomatus sicurus. Uh, polyomatus means many eyes. It refers to uh, all these little spots on the underside. And this is a female. As you can see, she uh, she does look quite a lot like a brown argus, but you can see this pale blue wash on the bases of the wings, which uh, confirms as common blue. And 
and this is a side by side comparison I was lucky enough to get. Uh, Brown Argus on the on the left, and you can see the uh, shape of the uh, the uh, the two dots in the shape of a number eight, and the pale and the dots on the on the side of the uh, common blue are horizontal rather than vertical. Don't, not sure how many records actually on surveys we've got of the holly blue. We should have, but uh, not so far. This is a female, a pale blue butterfly. This female with the black uh, wing edges and black spots on the underside. If there's a butterf if there's a blue butterfly bombing around a hedge or a tree, it's most likely to be a holly blue rather than the common blue. There's another shot of the underside. This one's was feeding in my garden on hemp agrimony. Right, the next uh, set are the Nymphalidae. Red Admiral. I don't think you're going to mix this up with any other butterfly really for these bright red streaks down the middle of the uh, the wing and the white tips it's fairly distinctive another shot when the wings are closed you don't see any of the upper wing you'll just get this under wing showing even when that's showing, this little white blotch of uh, here uh, will identify it as a as a red admiral. Be able to see uh, the comparison of the peak in a minute. And this is a painter lady. This is a, a summer visitor. It's not quite warm enough yet for these things to uh, survive our winters, so we have migrations every year they set off from central africa and uh, stop off breed um, the neck the young carry on the journey and they have been actually found as far as iceland which i think is the only butterfly in iceland uh, and then at the end of the season they make the return journey Vanessa Cardwai. Okay, that Cardwai refers to its um, food source, which is thistle. Very distinctive underwing. And we have the small tortoise shell. Another one that shouldn't be too difficult to separate from the others the tie c refers to the food plant which is nettle and there's the underwing if you just if you see a butterfly on a flower and you just got the underwing this white bar on the hind wing uh, towards the margin is, is distinctive it has its uh, four wings tucked in. And there's some uh, caterpillars feeding on nettle. Peacock is another very distinctive butterfly with the eyes. And this always reminds me of an owl. The, uh, the ears, the eyes, and even the beak, where the head is. And as you can see, the underwing of the peacock is just a plain black. So if you see a peacock settle and it's within your survey box, then uh, it's going to be this one. 
there's some meh of the caterpillars. <clears throat> the comma is another year round butterfly. It's, it's, it's another one that overwinters, so you'll, you may see this in spring as well as autumn. Polygonia refers to the, uh, means many angled. And uh, you can see why it's got its name with these notched wings. The salvum refers to this spot, this little white C on the hind wing, which you'll notice when the uh, wings are closed. Got several sites around Buxton for the dark green for Tilly. It's the only uh, fertility we have at the moment in Buxton so if you see one like this it's most likely to be dark green and so called because of the dark green uh, shading on the underwing this is the silver washed it hasn't made it into Buxton yet but again, it's another one that's uh, on the list now for uh, for uh, an entrance. This is a male because of these joined black lines on the upper wing. And if you look on the underwing, these this double row of dots um, distinguishes it from uh, the silver wash at uh, the dark green fertility. This photograph wasn't taken in Boston. Moving on to the browns, we have the speckle wood. If you see a butterfly bombing around the tops of trees, or it, it's just come off the meadow and flown into the tree, then it's likely to be a speckle wood. Quite a subtle pale brown with uh, creamy blotches what's the underwing this one's feeding on the uh, water mint i think that looks like it this is another species that's on the bat list the wall Lassiomata means hairy eyes. This one's a female. Uh, you'll see the difference between that and the male. The, this black line here um, is 90 degrees perpendicular to the wing margin. Whereas in the male this black this is a scent brand it's parallel to the, uh, the hind wing margin this is the underside i'm lucky enough to get these as regular visitors in the garden and this is one towards the end of the season when then uh, Quite a few battles with the lots of it. The gatekeeper male, very distinctive for the thick brown margins around the wings. This is a male because of the uh, the brown, the thick brown scent markings on the upper wing. They have two dots. In the in the black eye um, you sometimes see um, meadow browns with two dots but there's never as uh, the, the, you know, the meadow browns never have this extensive show of orange as they as do the gatekeeper the under wings quite distinctive as well uh, you've got this again you've got the two white dots 
but on the hind wing you've got this band this pale band running uh, from the top to the bottom of the wing and the little white dots which make which do dis, uh, distinguish it from uh, any other UK butterfly and there's a pairing cop so the male uh, the males here the females above As you can see, the uh, as I said earlier, the the, the meadow brown uh, doesn't show as extensive uh, orange as the gatekeeper. This is a female; she's the brighter of the two. The male's uh, a lot duller. As you can see here. I'm only referring to the colour, by the way. <laughs> And that's the the underwing. Uh, so there's a possibility you could mistake a um, a gatekeeper underwing for a meadow brown, but as you can see, this uh, you haven't got that pale line separating the the wing, and this is more of a two tone uh, dark brown to a paler brown on the uh, on the meadow brown. This one's that's uh, obviously been in a had a few lucky escapes. The ringlet is quite bright and distinctive in its uh, in its first flush. It is possible to mistake these for meadow browns later on in the season when they when they're both fading but at this time uh, uh, you know early on in the season uh, these these uh, dots on the hind wing and they can be anything up to four dots on each wing are quite distinctive and the underwing is even more distinctive you know you shouldn't be able to uh, mix this up with any other and the brown butterflies. And lastly, we come to the the small heath. As I said earlier, you'll never see this butterfly uh, with its wings flat. Um, they're quite flighty things. They usually have a favourite perch. And if you see one in flight, if you if you watch it for long enough, it'll settle somewhere. You can have a better look at it, but this this again this underwing is quite distinctive with this angle brown going into a pale outline. If you look for that, then you, you can't really mix it up with any other butterfly. And that's uh, a pair. Not much to separate them really. Well, the one on top is doing its best. Well, we've come to the end of the presentation. Whether you're starting out on uh, learning about butterflies or you're just catching up with some revision, I hope this presentation has been helpful. Uh, I've included a few links below. I find the UK butterfly ones really useful. Um, it's got loads of detail, lots of photographs, and even how to uh, pronounce the Latin names. Um, good luck, and uh, I may see you in the field. Bye for now.